Hi, I'm Rachel Delu. I'm a professor of art history at Princeton University and I study American painting and I'm here today to talk about a new acquisition at the Terra Foundation for American Art entitled Boat Going Through Inlet by the American painter, early modernist Arthur Dove. This is a fabulous picture and it's really a painting that embodies everything about Dove's work in this period. It's a water scene, it's a boat scene. Dove was someone who lived on and near the water for the majority of his life and he spent several years living on board the Mona, which was a yawl. And this may not be the Mona itself, but it represents Dove's life on the water and also his interest in meteorology, in weather, and all of the things that someone who lives on and near the water needs to stay attuned to. But of course it doesn't show those things with exactitude. It departs and distorts from reality to bring us a, an evocative view of a boat moving through space and time with wind and water flowing. Dove is not somebody who, who as a young man seemed destined to be an artist. He, his father wanted him to be a lawyer. He began as an illustrator for magazines, work that he wasn't hugely fond of. He traveled to France in the early 20th century and painted impressionist-like pictures, still lives and landscapes there. And he returned to the United States and did more illustration work. But in the 1910s, 1911s, he began to make a series of extraordinary pastels. And many people believe this was in part because of his encounter with the gallerist and photographer Alfred Stieglitz, who became one of his chief mentors and patrons. And he initially made many quite abstract pictures and through the teens continued to do this as well as his illustration work and then took a break from painting around 1917 and came back, back to it with, with a vengeance, one might say, in the 20s. And this is when some of his most beautiful paintings were created, in, including Boat going through Inlet. Um, th these are paintings of the water, of the landscape, of Dove's environment in Geneva, New York, where he lived for a while on his parents' farm. He moored his boat, the Mona, at Hale site. And these are pictures that reflect Dove's experience of this environment and not so much exactly what he sees but the evocativeness of wind, of water, of sunlight, of landscape for him. And this painting fits very much into this period of work for a number of reasons, the subject matter but also the way in which it deploys these amazing tonal bands of blue and gray to create a kind of wave-like rippling effect throughout the whole. And you see that in his pictures of water, his pictures of sunrise, sunset, moonlight. And so this painting in so many ways embodies exactly the best sort of painting that Dove was making in this period. Dove in an interview early in his career said that his aim as a painter wasn't to make abstract paintings. Rather, he used the term extraction to describe his working methods and for him that achieved something far more interesting and far more significant than any kind of abstraction would and so it was it was a conscious rejection of the idea of abstraction which was of course bubbling up in the avant-garde both in Europe and America and for him painting was about extraction pulling things out of the world rather than getting rid of the world and purifying the work of art so that it was something other than actuality. So Dove was someone who was hugely experimental when it came to media and materials. And this is a work on tin. And it was in the 1920s that he began working with tin as a support. And in some cases, the tin was left raw. And in some cases, it was painted over. And one of the really wonderful things about this painting is the fact that you can see the tin through some of the paint in various places. And it's actually quite strategic. Some of the tin forms these wonderful undulating bands that rhyme and produce a kind of point counterpoint with the tonal bands of, of paint, which enhances the sort of feel of the surge and heave of ocean in the work. So I was delighted to be invited to come see this painting because having only seen it in reproduction there were just certain things I couldn't make out. And so when I saw it in the gallery for the first time I was stunned by the, the, the questions it posed to me. And some of those questions run along the lines of what are those 
pencil marks that seem to sit on the surface of the tin and seem to sketch in the basic outlines of the picture. And Dove was known to use something called a pantograph to transfer some of his small scale sketches to his large scale canvases. And he would do this by tracing the sketches, um, which would then be transferred with a larger apparatus to a larger format. And this would often, often happen in pencil. And so the question is, is this happening here? And that's a mystery to be solved. I've not seen it yet on tin. I haven't seen the evidence of a pantograph on tin, but it would be really interesting to know or to figure out whether or not Dove used this technique. And so I would really love to know what, what the process by which this thing got made was. What did he do first? Did he scrape the surface of the tin? Did he lay down paint and then rub some of it off to make those spaces where the tin shows through? Um, what was he interested in when he made some of those masked elements very dim, almost invisible underneath other parts of paint? So for me, it would be where did he start and where did he finish? And what went into this thing, given that there's oil paint, there's wax emulsion, there is pencil mark, there is tin. Uh, what, what did the process look like that eventuated in this really beautiful work of art? This is a tricky one. It could be a moon, it could be a sun. For me, that looks a lot more like the sun's and Dove's other pictures. When Dove renders a moon, it isn't as bright. It isn't as vivid. It doesn't produce that kind of striking glow across the painting surface. The moon is far more subtle in his paintings, and more attention is given to its operations. So its phases, its waxings and wanings. The sun for Dove is a source of light, a source of power. So whenever you see an orb that glows with the kind of force that it does in boat going through inlet, you tend to think it's a sun, and that's why I think this might be a sun. But again, Dove would not want us to fuss too much over this. So Dove painted boats quite frequently, and this was in part because he lived on a boat, he lived near the water. But I also think that for him, boats represented an interesting middle ground between water and Earth. And he was very interested in the passage between terra firma and the sea. And if you think of the sea as a kind of medium, you begin to understand why the sea became, to a certain extent, a medium for Dove. And so the pictures of boats on water for him were pictures of his life, but also metaphors for the kinds of connections he wanted his pictures to make on a kind of macro or global level.